Hi, this is Chet Luther with Xenos. Today, I will be covering how to set up a productive Zenpack development environment. While it is possible to develop Zenpacks on any Xenos system, the process could be slow and potentially dangerous to a production system. By following this guide, you will learn how to isolate dangerous changes from production systems, develop and test changes much more quickly, and more easily troubleshoot problems when they do occur. We will be following along with the development environment section of the Zenpack SDK.Xenos.com documentation. You'll find there's additional documentation on building Zenpacks once the development environment is set up. You may also want to check out training.Xenos.com to enroll for the instructor-led Zenpack development training class. Now, before we get started, you'll need to make sure you have some prerequisites in place. You will need a single host Xenos 5 or 6 non-production system. You may use Xenos Resource Manager or Xenos Core. In most cases, I recommend using Xenos Core as a development system, even if your production system is Resource Manager. Core requires fewer system resources, and services tend to restart faster because it's a more minimal system. Any Zenpack you develop on Core will work on Resource Manager. I recommend at least four CPU cores, 20 gigabytes of memory, and 75 gigabits of, gigabytes of storage, at least for your development environment. You'll find these are much lower than a normal Xenos system's requirements. So let's go ahead and jump right in here. I have a system installed here. We'll want to just check to make sure that our starting place is where it should be. We'll see what Xenos we have installed. You can see in this particular case, I have Xenos Core 5.3.3 installed. Um, doesn't really matter what version it is. Like I said, as long as it is Xenos 5 or 6, any version of 5 or 6, um, this is applicable to. Next thing we want to check is that we have a Xenos service deployed. So that's service T, service list. And we can see, as expected, I have a Xenos.core service here because that's the software I have installed. And we can check service D service status and see that all of my services are stopped. And they should be stopped at the beginning of this. Uh, it'll help follow along. So the first thing that we need to do is figure out how to best share files between our host system and the service containers where all of the Xenos services run. We'll be making a lot of changes to files when we're doing our Zenpack development, and it would be tedious to have to reinstall the Zenpack and restart all of the services every time we made changes to files. Um, so for our development environment, we can get around that and directly change the files and have them be affected immediately in all of the service containers. The first thing that we're going to need to do to allow that is to add a Xenos user to our host system that matches the user ID and group ID of the Xenos user in the containers. So we have these steps outlined here. First, we will add our Xenos group with a group ID of 1206. And then we will add our Xenos user with this next command, add user, with a user ID of 1337 and a group ID of 1206, that group that we just created. Now we have our Xenos user created. Um, also, for convenience, we'll probably want to be always want to be the Xenos user on our host system as we're doing development there. So we want to be able to execute uh, a lot of commands as the Xenos user. So we'll add the Xenos user into the wheel, Docker, and actually service D group as well. So to wheel to Docker, and to Service D. 
All right, so now we have our Xenos user created. Um, we can make life even easier for ourselves by creating uh, some helper aliases and functions for our Xenos user so that we don't have to be constantly attaching into containers and running commands and then exiting the containers. We can do all of our work directly on the host and uh, essentially not worry about the containers at all anymore. So what I would recommend is here just following along under the helper, helper aliases and functions, take all of these and just paste them into the end of your xenosusers.bashrc file. You can see that file already exists. And I will just paste those in there and save the file. All right, so now that our Xenos user is created, we'll go ahead and start setting up that directory that we're going to use to share files between the host system and all of the service containers. Um, we will use a directory right off the root, slash z, just because it's very quick to type. And we have to make sure that the ownership of that directory is correct. We want our Xenos user and group to own that directory so the uh, ownership looks the same from the host and the containers. And then all we have to do after that is reconfigure our service D, our control center, um, to mount that Z directory from the host into every container that it starts automatically for us. And to do that, we have to edit this file. Our slash etsy slash default slash service d file and we want to add these options which I will explain as I add them so inside of this uh, slash etsy slash default slash service d file we are going to search for service d underscore opts options we will uncomment it by removing the hash mark and we will add our options. So what we're saying here is we always want to mount the asterisk is for always or every container that started the Z directory slash Z directory from the host to the slash Z directory inside of the container. So this is also important that the host and the container know it as the same path. So once we make that change to the service D configuration file, we can save it, and we must restart service D at this point. So that will be systemctl restart service D. And this should go rather quickly because we weren't running any Xeno services. Now that it's restarted, we can just quickly check its status. it is active and it is running. Everything looks okay there. We can run a service D service status. Make sure everything is still there. Everything's looking good. Everything is still stopped, of course, because it was stopped when we restarted it. Um, so now we should have that Z directory available in every service container that starts. So let's go ahead and start uh, the whole thing. Let's start Xenos.core. Service D, service start Xenos.core. Now, if you get this error about missing an address assignment, it's probably because you haven't added a host to your system. So I just have to run off and do that in the background and then try this again. Okay, there we go. on their status, so things are beginning to start up now. Um, so we can use this to test to make sure that that sharing of the Z directory is working correctly. So we want to become the Xenos user on the host. So I will switch user, Xenos. I am on the host, ZP Lab. I will go into that Z directory. 
and currently it's empty. There are no files in here, but we can see that the directory is owned by the Xenos user. So I'm going to create a file here called um, onhost. So I've created a file in here owned by Xenos Xenos. It's called onhost. I can use service D, service attach to the Zope service to enter that container. You can tell I'm in one of the service containers now because my host name is this uh, randomized. And if I go into the Z directory here, right, I can see that that on host file is here. I could add my own file in container. Both are there. I could even remove the file that the host created and then exit out of the container and on the host I can see my in or on host file is gone and my in container file is there. It is the same directory. There's no syncing of files happening here. It's just the exact same file system instantaneously being used by all of the containers and the host. So now we can do all the development we want on our host and those files that we're modifying are going to be immediately affected inside of all the service containers. Um, so let's go ahead and do a uh, quick, more real-world test of how this works. I'm going to get rid of this in-container file. So my Z directory is empty again. And now we can uh, use one of our helpers to go ahead and create a Zenpack. So in this Z directory, I'm going to run Zenpack lib, dash dash create, and I'll call it Zenpacks. I think I call it acme.widgeter. And um, following along the documentation here, we can, if we go next to getting started, we can see how to use npack lib to create npack. So we can see that it has created a source directory for our npack. It has created all of the sort of skeleton of the files that you need in a Zen pack. And if I look in my Z directory, I can see that it has created it here. Um, this has only created the Zen pack. It has not installed it. So let's go ahead and install this Zen pack. It doesn't have any functionality in it yet, but it's a Zen pack. So to do that, we want to use Zen pack, link, install, So I am using the full path to it. Now because of the aliases and functions that we set up, I'm running this zenpack command on my host. But behind the scenes, it's going to go into the Zope container and run it there. But the slash z directory is the same in the container as it is on the host. So this will work. And now the Zenpack is installed. So now if I were to attach to my Zope container again, um, so I'm inside of the Zope service container, become the Xenos user here. And I can see, of course, that I have the source directory for my Zenpack in the Z directory. But what I can also see is under my in my container under var slash xeno slash zenpacks, there is a easy dash install.pth file here that lists all of the zenpacks that are installed in the system. And we can see that my acme.widgeter zenpack has been installed in the system. And if I leave the container and I make further updates to this from the host, they are going to be immediately affected inside of all of the service containers. Um, some of the affected services that are using the code and may need to reload it may need to be restarted. Um, but I don't have to reinstall the Zenpack just to copy files into all of the containers. I don't have to restart all of my services just to load new container images that have the Zenpack inside of them. The changes I make here are available inside of the, inside of the containers. So you'll find this makes it much easier to develop Zenpacks. Um, one final bit, 
you might want to be aware of is you can make your system even more minimal. If you're tight on memory especially, something you can do is set non-essential services uh, to have a manual launch or essentially be disabled and only start if you explicitly start them. So if I do a service deservice list, you will see right now almost all of the services have a launch set to auto with only a couple that are rarely used like Zen Mail and Zen Pop 3 set to manual. But if I wanted to, I could uh, basically disable all of these collector services um, because I'm probably not actively monitoring anything with my development environment. So an example of how you would do that would be service D, service, edit, and we'll just pick one. We'll pick Zen Python. And this will open up the services uh, JSON configuration uh, in your editor. And what you want to search for here is um, launch, actually in quotes. I find this easiest, so backslash, um, quote, launch. That will take you to the launch configuration. And you simply change it from auto to manual and you save the file. We do a service D service list again. We will now see that Zen Python is also set to manual. Now, it was already running when we set it to manual, so it will still be running. If we wanted to stop it, we just have to stop it. However, because it's now set to manual launch, the next time we um, start or restart the whole Xenos.core service, Zen Python won't start. It will stay stopped, just like Zen Mail and Zen Pop 3 do. So uh, in the documentation here, you can follow this. It'll, it'll give you the full list of processes that you might want to consider um, setting to manual launch mode. So that is how to set up your development environment. I hope you found this video useful. Thank you for watching, and have a great day.